Hello, so in this video we will talk about how to enter UK specialty training in ophthalmology. So here's what we'll actually cover in this video. We'll cover the three essential components that you need to fulfill to be able to enter into ophthalmology specialty training. My name is Saad, I'm an ophthalmology trainee myself here in the UK, specifically in ST2 year. I am currently a trainee in Scotland, which is part of the entire UK National Health Service. So let's make it easy and break it down into the three main components that you need to enter ophthalmology specialty training in the UK. So the three essential things are number one, portfolio, number two, the MSRA exam, and finally, the interview itself. By putting your score in each of these domains together, we make 100% of your final application score and we use this score to rank you against every other ophthalmology applicant in the country and this then ultimately determines your rank and whether you are eligible to get a place in ophthalmology training in that year. The portfolio carries 50% of the final mark, the MSRA exam carries 20% of the final mark and the interview carries 30% of the final mark. You can already see that the portfolio carries the most weightage when you're applying for this specialty. So why don't we start our discussion today by speaking first about the portfolio since it carries the most weightage. So speaking about the portfolio, now the reason the portfolio has such a strong weightage is, is because it kind of gives you a very good and broad overview of all the things that you've done to show your interest in ophthalmology. And it's a good way to highlight all your training, your previous medical work, any research projects, any quality improvement projects. It has sections on prizes, even exams. So as an ophthalmology training, you need to finish the FRC OFT exams by the end of your training by doing the part one exam or even the refraction certificate before you actually enter training you can actually get points for the portfolio everything you need to do in the portfolio is available online and i'm going to link it just about over here and this helps guide you what exactly you need to do in the portfolio to achieve the required points and so in most cases it is very clear what you need to do to achieve the relevant points if you want to get as high marks as possible for your portfolio. I can give you some examples of the key domains that are present within this portfolio. Things like prizes, audits, teaching section, commitment to specialty section. You can also have sections on research. So within this table, you'll find everything you need to do to get good points in the portfolio. And this will determine 50% of your final scores. So I would recommend starting early on in your career if you can try and work on the requirements of this portfolio. You can start as early as in medical school and obviously in your foundation years after you have graduated from medical school, you can further hone in on the points that you need to get into training. Next thing I'm going to speak about is the MSRA exam. Now, the MSRA exam might contribute only 20% of the final mark that you need to get into training, but please don't underestimate this exam. If I actually talk to you about the way the ophthalmology application runs throughout the year, the first point out of these three things, the first thing you actually do is the MSRA exam. Only the top 300 candidates who pass this exam are then eligible for their portfolio to be assessed. What does that mean? It means that if you haven't passed the MSRA exam, no one's even going to look at your portfolio. So all of those requirements that you fulfilled, the exams you did, the prizes you got, the teachings you did, no one is still going to see those because you haven't passed the MSRA exam. So prepare well for this exam. It is an important exam. Only the top 300 candidates are then allowed to move on to the next stage of the application, which involves the portfolio review and the actual interview itself. So you sitting in the interview or you having your portfolio assessed by somebody else is actually dependent on you passing the MSRA exam. And finally, number three, I'm going to talk about the interview. So once you have, once you've done your MSRA exam and you've been invited to an interview, the interview is going to constitute of two things. The first is going to be a clinical knowledge station and the second is going to be more of a communication ethical station. The interview can be prepared for. We have resources online which you can access to, to prepare well for the interview and it constitutes a 30% mark towards your final application score. The way I would go about things is I would first start off preparing for your portfolio as soon as you can, no matter what stage of training you are right now, whether you are in medical school, whether you are a junior doctor who's recently graduated, 
and as you come near to the application deadlines for ophthalmology training, I would probably start preparing for the MSRA exam three to four months before the actual exam. And during this time, I would dedicate my time completely to the MSRA exam and make sure that you can make it into the top 300 candidates who pass the exam. But don't forget, it's not just about passing this exam. Your score contributes to 20% of your final mark. And so make sure you do this exam justice. And once you have passed your MSRA exam, I would then start preparing for the interview. And once you've given the interview, you have done everything you could have to give the examiners enough information about why you are a good ophthalmology applicant. So that was an overview of the three essential components of applying to ophthalmology specialty training in the UK. It is an excellent speciality which combines both medicine and surgery at the same time and I would always recommend medical students and junior doctors to consider it. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you would like to see more of my content, here's my latest video right here. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe to my channel to support everything I do here. If you have any suggestions or ideas for more content, please leave them down in the comment section below. I promise I will read it. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.